Let's watch. Do all evangelicals think the same? Does that person know Jesus? Where is he the way to Jesus? Is he also... Uh, oh, God, this is going to make me lose my fucking mind. Oh, man. Oh, brother. Oh, Jesus. Oh, do all evangelicals think the same, folks? So going to heaven because I see Christ in every human being? I'd say no. They're evangelicals. What the fuck? They have to say yes. Yeah, I would say agree because I believe that Jesus is God and his life, his death, his resurrection is the great redemption that God had for the world. If you really think about it, if you believe Jesus is not the only way, you're calling God an idiot because you think he's going to say one day, oh, shoot, I, you could go to heaven by being a good person? Or, and I spent all this energy and time to sacrifice my own son? Oh, why didn't somebody tell me there was another way? I mean, if... Oh, that's so good. That's... Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, my fucking God, dude. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die watching this. I'm gonna die. You're gonna turn chatters into r slash atheism Andy's with this video? I mean, I'm gonna turn into a fucking r slash atheism Andy with this video. Oh. I just, oh God, okay, all right, let's see. Let's see what's going on. Adult convert detected, yeah. Get fucked, he own you with facts and logic, oh yeah. If there was another way, Jesus would not have gone to the cross. Do you think it may be just a tad harmful to say that we're calling God an idiot for those that maybe haven't come to that conclusion? Oh my God, that's a lib. Oh my God, we have a lib ass evangelical, baby, let's go. Yet, or maybe people that are wrestling through that because i mean think about it like this if, if i grew by the way up this is so relevant this is so <laughs> relevant to the last episode of the rehearsal oh my god which was great by the way i didn't finish it yet but fucking i could literally could not physically finish that episode uh, or if we grew up in an like islamic predominantly islamic like territory like could we confidently say that we would still be Christian in those environments? I love your passion. I just fear we as Christians have like caused so much hurt by just how we've communicated things and just not giving people room to be messy in their beliefs and messy in where they are. I support the LGBTQ plus community. Three, two. He's gonna say one. yes. I'm just curious to see what support means. Like, I feel like a lot of Christians, at least that I've been friends with, I mean, even myself at one point would be afraid of saying that I support the LGBT community. I know that we're just called to love our neighbors, and if my neighbor's LGBTQ, there's no reason why I can't love them, especially where we live. Like, to not invite people of that community into our churches, into our lives, into whatever we have going on would be just like a big loss for the church, because especially where we're at in the country, this that's a very big demographic, and so I think uh, missing out on that would just be... Have you seen Angela's Insta video saying she was happy with how the cut turned out? Had no problem with looking like an insane conspiracy theorist and an anti-Semite? I love her. She's the gift that keeps on giving. Let's, let's continue, though. That's, that's unrelated to the matter at hand. But she is, like, I'm not surprised by that because, like, that's, I feel like that's who she is. Like, the type of person who's, like, you know, I, I am that. I am that person. So I'm, I'm happy that that it's coming clearly um the gay girl in the cutoff shirt isn't fooling anyone stop stop you don't say that but also i agree okay and and maybe the other guy too in the back like but also you shouldn't say that even though you're probably correct okay and so I think uh, missing out on that would just be a shame for the church. Gun to my head? Construction worker. Yeah, exactly. No. No, you're... Yeah. I can't. I can't even... I can't even think. When you say, like, 
Like, uh, is she... No, dude, come on. The woke version. You got to say she's queer coded, okay? Which she is. So there you go. Boom. Solved. See, that's the thing. I agree with everything that you've said because I know that God loves them and they are a minority group that's been persecuted wrongfully and I believe no one should be shamed or beat up based on... But you were literally sprinted to the other side. <laughs> what the fuck, dude? My man was like, they shouldn't be beat up, but also like, I, they should be electroshocked. Uh, like, they should be electrocuted until they're no longer homosexual. Like... <laughs> on their sexual orientation but the thing is but what people do with their sex life in their own bedrooms is none of my business i'm not gonna say anything about that i don't i don't really care what they do but when they come to Cap my area and they tell me that my god thinks all that is okay that's when i have a problem but in terms of supporting their view of god is what i don't support i would also say though that that's a big generalization like why bro why are you like this why are you writing for the white man what the fuck's wrong with you somewhere along the line the white man came and was like hey this is what you should believe in dumbass and then your grandparents or you seems like an adult convert he does he's giving a lot of like adult convert vibes to me but like what happened why are you why are you believing in these things okay uh, anyway just like people generalize Christians and say like Christians hate gay people like there's a lot of gay people who literally don't give two craps like what Christians believe you know right. it's kind of the same way like as much as we want to love people and we like have come on bro you're evangelical with a septum who are you fooling madam who Jubilee's like yeah let's let's uh let's throw this person in the pile like what would <laughs> okay yeah let's let's figure like it'll be fine no one will no one will know i've experienced the love of jesus and we want other people to experience that like i'm not gonna love someone with an agenda i'm not gonna love them with the hope that one day they'll convert i'm gonna love them would you say that being gay is a sin no what do you think would classify being a part of the lgbt community homosexual activity because i would consider my, like i'm gay but like okay for well i didn't say it he said it okay yo that's sus bro <laughs> Yo, 4K, caught in 4K, being sus. <laughs> that's my favorite meme, dude. Bro, yo, that's hella sus, dude. Caught in 4K. <laughs> for some Christians, like, just phrasing that is, like, horrifying because they believe that being gay is a sin. Personally, I think that there's cultural and societal attachments to the concept of being gay. But if you just take it down to the textbook, I mean, being gay is simply attraction to the same sex. Some of you are saying that you would advocate for celibacy for the LGBTQ community if they want to be Christian or not. I think most Christians are on the same page of like, being gay is not a sin, but it's more so what you do with the fact that you are gay. Kind what? Of delineates what's sin and what's not. And I would even say, it's not my pl Wait, what the fuck? Wait, oh dude, what the fuck, what? So he's just like, hey, just, it's okay to enjoy dick, just not, you know, just don't lean into it, you know? Is he saying it's okay to think about it, but like if you if you put it in your mouth and like yeah you can't do that gay shit? How are you? How are you a gay man? Place to decide if it's right for a gay person to choose to be celibate. Like if someone wants to put something in their mouth, they can. Like I don't think I should have any opinion in that matter because it's not my life, it's not my sex life. You know what I mean? Because we don't have opinions on a heterosexual relationships. Okay. I mean, aside from like aside from sex before marriage, but it's like, we're not asking people what they're doing in their free time, you know what I mean? I think a question we have to ask as evangelicals is why the LGBTQ community doesn't feel safe in our spaces. And I think that is a question that should be primary of if we really do love and accept people as made in the image of God, why don't they feel safe? And why do they feel like they have to leave our spaces? And I've had so many- Yo, I'm always wondering. <laughs> I'm wondering that too. 
people are always saying like why i wonder why it's like it's like asking if you got a bunch of clansmen together and they were like why don't we have any black participation in the clan fellas we need to open this up to diversity okay it's 2022 shit's gotten a bad rap out there brothers what what's happening what the fuck why why can't we get more blacks in the clan <laughs> he's like i know why look at his face his face is like i, I know why because me i'm the one i i am the reason i don't want them in my space <laughs> gay friends leave the church leave christianity um so many people part of this LGBT she's probably korean korean christians make american evangelicals look like burning man orgious uh yes but also i don't know if he's korean LGBTQ community and so that that is the question that i lead with uh, in how i talk about and think about um how we love and care for the lgbtq community evangelicals are misunderstood or mischaracterized by the media Three, two, one. There's a lot of Christian Filipinos too, yeah. <sighs> Wait, why is Jason saying evangelicals are misunderstood by the media while literally leaning into the fucking meme of an evangelical in media? My friend, where do you think the meme comes from? It's literally you. You are responsible. You are doing it while you're simultaneously like, oh, I mean, I don't, I don't know where this is coming from. Really weird. Oh, oh sorry. Oh my gosh, sorry. It's just, that is so hard. I do feel like media outlets sometimes can focus on like failures and like christian leadership and stuff in that regard looking at i just don't understand like why if you take on the evangelical designation okay then like why are you open to all this other shit it just like inherently is contradicting you could have been like a different type of christian you know what i mean like you literally could have been any other kind of christian you know what I mean? And you're like, no, I'm evangelical, but also at the same time, it's like really fucked up. Hashtag not all evangelicals. Exactly. These examples in a way that feels portrayed, in a way that feels frustrated, then I would go on that side. A lot of the times the negative media that does come to like the church or Christianity is because of one extreme again that's just a generalization like if you see one group doing one thing that doesn't mean the whole body of christ is doing it if the prompt were christians i would definitely be on this side i think the reason i would choose this side for the term evangelicals is because generally like vast majority like 80 percent of evangelicals voted for trump i do think a lot of the news or like the coverage about who we are and our failures is like, I've literally never seen an evangelical Christian like this. I've never, I'm sorry. I'm sure they exist, okay? And, but like, I've never, I've never in my fucking life met an evangelical Christian who's like, I'm an evangelical Christian who behaves this way, okay? Where the fuck did Jubilee find these people, bro? It, it doesn't make sense. They are the biggest fucking fundies, dude. Like, wh what do you mean? They're the most normalized fundamentalist religious group on the planet. It's literally like the, the Taliban and their understanding of Islam. And then, and then you ask them like, oh, what do you think about this? And they're like, well, you know, we get a bad rap. It's, it's very fucked up, bro. We get such a bad rap, bro, in the media. It's bullshit. It doesn't make sense. Maybe you need to get out more. Motherfucker, you think I, I'm going to be out and about and like uh, the meet evangelicals like this? What are you, crazy? I do go out with your mom, who is not an evangelical Christian. Honestly, I'm a Christian with a cross tattooed on my body and view something that's strictly personal to me. It got me through dark times and that's all it is to me. I don't force my shit on others, so whatever. Believe what you want. We are only all here once. Wait, what? Man, we're not fucking talking about you. We're talking about a very specific designation, okay? We're talking about a specific sect, okay? 
of Christianity that is is very aggro, especially in America. You didn't say you're evangelical. You're just like, I'm just Christian. That doesn't mean you're evangelical. Real. And it's kind of like the stark reality of our church, a lot of the issues that we see. I think we need to own them. I think we need to apologize. Okay, do you believe that Jesus Christ is going to come back to earth and the rapture is going to happen? Like, that's the questions that these people should be asked. I hope they do ask that. Like, is Jesus Christ coming back to earth and all the fucking non-converted people are going to go to hell as you get uh, beamed into he heaven? Okay? Like, do you believe that? Do you not believe that? for them. I think we need to repent from them, and I think we need to show people who Jesus really is, apart from this sort of conglomerate movement that we have, and I do think we're more... Like, evangelicals are so different than other Christian sects in America that Paul Weirich, who himself is a fucking Catholic, abandoned his own people and was like, these are the motherfuckers I need to motivate. Okay? These are the people who we can mobilize. Do you understand? That's how much of a fucking important sect it is. Like Paul Weirich of the moral uh, majority recognized the, the mobilization factor within the evangelical Christian movement in this country. <laughs> yeah, a more real sample of American evangelicals would have been the guys from the conservative TikToks. Yeah, straight up. represented right now also there's so many evangelicals doing beautiful work that represents who jesus is and what the kingdom of god looks like absolutely but i think we need to own that the media isn't covering things that they're making up they're covering things that are really happening in, in the church so. oh my god <laughs> Wait, what? She just popped off. I didn't even need to apologize for them. I think we need to repent from them. And I think we need to show people who Jesus really is, apart from this sort of conglomerate movement that we have. And I do think we're more represented right now. Also, there's so many evangelicals doing beautiful work that represents who Jesus is and what the kingdom of God looks like, absolutely. But I think we need to own that the media isn't covering things that they're making up. They're covering things that are really happening in, in the church. So. They're talking about the abuse scandal. That's why they popped off. Yeah. Um, a primary plank of evangelical Christianity, for those who don't know, because I feel like a lot of people are like, what? What's so different about them? Like, what's so different about uh, evangelicals in comparison to like other uh, sects of Christianity? Okay, is that uh, here? And I'll and I'll use PBS Frontline, the Jesus Factor. Okay, for what it means. Um, evangelicals are those who first of all believe the Bible is authoritative and infallible. Okay. The theological distinction which separates evangelicals from, say, mainline Protestantism, which generally veers from that kind of designation of the Bible as the authoritative word of God. Okay? And secondly, they are most importantly focused on conversion. Okay? So they're incredibly fucking annoying. They are the ones who are constantly, constantly trying to fucking convert. Convert you to evangelical Christianity. Because they think that that is the only path towards salvation. That the rapture is going to happen. And, and when the rapture happens, when, when Jesus Christ comes back to earth and fights, uh, when Israel takes over the entire land in that area, okay, Jesus Christ is going to come back to earth in Megiddo and he's going to fight Satan, okay? And when that happens, and by the way, they think that this is going to happen before 2050, okay? remember that and when there's a big anime battle during that process all the evangelical christians who have been converted and all the evangelical christians are going to be sucked up beamed up into heaven and all the people including the jews 
okay? That's why I always say it's not like, uh, you know, the, that allyship that evangelical Christians have in America with uh, Israel is not exactly a good one for the Jews in the end, if it were real. Um, everyone else is going to burn in hell, in eternal damnation, le lest they convert. Dude, there are movies based on this shit. I watched it when I was a kid. Yeah, we did too. We watched it here. We used to do movie night. I love those fucking uh, evangelical movies. Okay. It's viewed as the objective authoritative word of God, as opposed to the mainline Protestant view called neo-orthodoxy, which holds you see that the Bible becomes the word of God in a kind of existential encounter with it. So that's the distinction. Evangelicals are also people of faith in the American Protestant community who believe that you must be born again. As Jesus said to Nicodemus in John 3.3, 3, you must be born again. And Nicodemus said, well, should I go back into my mother's womb? And Jesus said, no, but you have to be born of the water and the spirit. In other words, you have to have your heart changed by him, by Jesus. Frankly, millions of Americans, unbeknownst to some people in New York and other elitist institutions, actually have had this kind of experience. Their hearts have been warmed, as John Wesley said, by Jesus Christ, who lives today and reigns over matters private and matters public. That's what evangelicals believe. Uh, like uh, Mike Pence, you know, he's a, he's a born-again Christian. Okay? Um. And they care more about the emphasis on the individual nature of salvation. They have a personal and close best friendship with Jesus Christ. Their stands for Jesus, okay? They literally think Jesus Christ is like uh, their homie. But it's ultimately about each person as an individual making what we would call a faith decision, deciding if you indeed ascribe to this theology or not. Second, another hallmark is that you get the sense that there's one source of, source of religious truth. Okay, that it's the it's salvation only comes if everyone converts to. Yeah, I know, I know. We're not going to do the Jesus Christ is my N word song. Okay, just stop. We're not going to play that YouTube video. If Jesus was on Twitch, you'd be washed. Not going to lie. Stop trying to get me to play that uh, song. Wait, what? You guys have never heard that? Jesus Christ. The Internet has become like literally a relic. Chad doesn't know. Do you guys really not know? Yes. And this is where evangelizing comes from. You need to evangelize the others, okay? Ev evangelical comes from the Greek word of spreading the good news or whatever the fuck, which is evangelizing. That You need to tell others. If you believe that you know something is true and you believe it has eternal consequences, then you want to share that with other people. You don't want to just hold that to yourself and be silent about it. So there is a sense of wanting to make converts, wanting to let people know the gospel, the good news, so that they would be a part of it as well, which is part of the reason why they're so incredibly fucking motivated to impact political policy. That's why you're always like, why the fuck do these people care if I get an abortion or not? That's why. That's also why they're so like incredibly culty and fucking annoying. Like that's why they're so Karen like, okay, in their religious beliefs that it's like unironically built in to their religious belief is to be annoying. They have to evangelize. They have to tell you what you can and can't do about your body, what you can and can't do for salvation. It's like only they believe it. You don't believe that shit, but that doesn't matter. Missionary work is considered to be very important to the evangelical branches. Mission work is also a prime example of how these groups indoctrinate teens by isolating them in foreign countries. Yeah. Okay, we're not going to do that. It's the same Christians who post everywhere how Christian they are. I know Tucker's back. We're going to watch Tucker in a second. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll watch Bible Man after this, too. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Christians are about as annoying as LGBT. Wait, what? The gifter? What the fuck? What the fuck do you mean by that? Take a week off, yeah. idiot. Preach. Women should be allowed leadership roles in the church. Three, two, one. I mean, why would they? They're not well, going to say no. These guys are the most I didn't woke. want to open my mouth so I don't get taken out of context. So I want to first start off by saying I do believe that women are valuable and crucial in the leadership of the church. 
and God has defined gender roles for the family. I've had wonderful women pastors preach at my church, and so I do believe women pastors are good. But like any, I believe that the senior pastors cult, though, there are cults out there. They take terms that we're very, very familiar with. They redefine them. A definition that, that I've come up with after reading a lot of brilliant Christian thinkers and also atheistic thinkers who are non-woke, here is what I've come up with. What is wokeism? It's an authoritarian worldview hmm, that seeks to deconstruct the foundations of our Christian faith by overwhelming, overpowering, and overthrowing those who do not adhere to its ideology. Wow, that's, that's pretty heavy. If I did define wokeism in one- That's crazy. Like, wow, that's pretty heavy. That thing that I just made up, pretty scary stuff, right? It's like, bro, you wrote that. Like, you made that up. Why are you acting like it's, oh my God, I can't. Isn't that just evangelicalism? Yes. One word, paganism. Let's throw out some names. Karl Marx. <laughs> Frederick Nietzsche. Sigmund Freud. Wow. <coughs> Pastor of the church is the father of the church family, and the father is a male. I think there's a loose definition of leadership. I don't know if we're referring to specific, like, specific positions within the church, yeah. but I do feel like, you know, even in the Bible, there's so many instances of females expressing, like, leadership. As a woman who is studying to be a pastor, I appreciate that you say that you think women can be pastors. I do still think there's harm in over-differentiating. I think something Jesus says is, or not Jesus, something Paul says is there's no more male nor female. And ultimately, I think a part of what Jesus brings is equality where there was once difference. The Bible Bro, I swear to God, being like really into Jesus, being really into theology and being really into Jesus is like being super into like a specific anime Except, like, that specific anime brings joy, right? At least, like, and you can be really fucking annoying about, like, One Piece, right? Let's say One Piece, because it's, like, around the same length as, you know, all the iterations of the Bible. Um, it, It's, like, at least One Piece brings you joy when you read it. It doesn't make you fucking, like, question your identity. It doesn't make you, like, fucking hate yourself. You know what I mean? It's not constantly giving you the worst lessons. Like... And you're just fucking annoying, right? You're just annoying. You're like, oh, I'm a One Piece fan. It's never going to end. Everyone should watch it. And it's fucking annoying. You can be very annoying to other people around you. But, like, the Bible is the same shit, except in this circumstance, it also, like, upsets you. Just be really into One Piece. Why? Why the Bible? Put the Bible down. Be really into One Piece, okay? Be one with the peace. Actually, that's not true, because One Piece fans are literally the same as evangelical Christians, where they unironically evangelize One Piece non-fucking-stop. We, I don't want a job, okay? I don't want a second job to get into an anime that's, like, this fucking long. The manga is, like, 100 uh, sequences, okay? But, but like, you're not, you're not an evangelical. You're also queer-coded, okay? I'm not going to say she's a lesbian or bisexual, but, like, you can't be evangelical. Be like, oh, the Bible should be interpreted not literally, you know what I mean? Like, what? That's crazy. 
I think to interpret the Bible literally is a very Western Christianity thing, and so I'm not going to say that one person who doesn't take the Bible word for word is in the wrong with that. Yeah, I think the Bible is absolutely the inspired word of God, and that we need to understand it, but we need to understand it in its context. Like, you're just Protestant. You're just mainline Protestant. You're not. You're not evangelical. Shut the fuck. Get out of there. Get out of the fucking. Stop answering the questions. Stop answering the questions. You're just a regular Protestant. Stop. Stop it. No, no, you can't do that. You're a fake fan. You can't. You, you can't do that. You can't say you're a Jets fan and then be like, oh, like, well, I don't know. The Patriots are doing really well every year. I, I kind of like watching them too. Like, no, you can't. That's not, you can't do that. That's not allowed. It's literally one of the rules. And it's genre and make sure we pay careful attention to not just put up. She's a, yeah, she's a bandwagon fan. She is stole. This is stolen fundamentalist valor. It's fucked up. Her Western lens on. Um, and I think that's how we can treat the Bible most faithfully. I agree with that, uh, that there are different genres. So I don't take every little thing as literal in the Bible. I take it as I see it. I'd be curious to see your perspective on some of the Psalms. Yeah, so as she mentioned, different genres, like Revelation isn't all literal, but the message where most of what the Bible says, I think should be taken at face value is what I mean by literal. There's still some room for interpretation with that though. So it's like, how literal is that, you know? Yeah, especially when your perspective is like, can be shaped so much off of like cultural. And Jets fans are evangelical, ride or die. Actually, not true, because they fucking don't evangelize. They know they're they're losing all the time, and they don't want to suck you into their fucking uh, death pact, okay? The Jets are closer to Jews in that regard, from my personal experience. They're like, we don't want you. It's fine. You don't, you know what I mean? It's fine. We, we, we have enough in the fandom, okay? No, you can't join. No, it, it's okay. Jets or Mormons don't bring the Jewish into this. I was raised in the Christian church and the amount of preaching that makes you want to actually remove yourself from this earth was so significant that I hear it. Or am I in proximity of this church? I start entering extreme distress. Christianity is literally fucking traumatic. Actually, it's not, it's not Jews. It's more Catholic, I would say. Because, yeah, they, Jets fans now watch their games as a penance for the sins of our ancestors. The only Jets fan I've ever met also shit on his own team as he was brought up. Yeah. On societal upbringing. Yeah. I support the overturning of the Roe v. Wade. Three, two, one. I think you can absolutely believe in the sanctity of life and the sacredness of choice. Um, and when it comes to medical decisions, I don't see why anyone else should have a say. There are no other like ways that the government is regulating body, bodily decisions. I feel like it's just making abortion unsafe. It's making it much more difficult for women in low-income communities to get out of their cycles. And so Bro, come on. Jubilee is so fucked up for this. They literally were just like, yeah, let's come on. Like, do all Wahhabist fundamentalists believe the same? And then you got a guy like me in there. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, no, I, I think it's chill. Like, <laughs> that's, come on. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of here, dude. So I think it's just going to do a lot more harm than good. And they're coming for things beyond abortion. They're going to start coming for birth control. They're going to start coming for contraception. Like, they've already said that these things are they're going to start working towards. And this is just kind of like the first step of it. I am actually pro-life, but I, I think we should have done a lot of groundwork in investing more in like the foster care system, investing more in like women's health care, investing more in like, you know, education and all these different like all these different spheres. Anybody who was pro-life, I, I think we also need to be the ones to also step up and invest more in like in women and children. And, like, we need to be putting our money where our mouth is and putting our time and our resources. I totally agree with all that. And as you mentioned, I think there's a lot 
lot of issues around abortion and Roe v. Wade. Jason, what do you what, what do you mean you totally agree with all that? You're literally off the fucking camera pan, dude. The camera has to pan to you. That's how strongly you agree with overturning Roe v. Wade. Oh, I totally agree with all that. Yeah, okay, bro. But I don't really see this as an evangelical issue or even a religious issue. I see it as a moral issue. When is it okay to kill a baby? And overturning Roe v. Wade is saying you shouldn't. I don't even think any pro-choice person is wanting to kill babies. I think that is a very harsh uh, use of language because also 70% of women who have had abortions identify as Christian. And so in using language like that, especially when it's coming from what the pulpit or whether whatever it is that is so harmful because women in your churches, in your pews, in your small groups and whatever, someone there has probably had to be like faced with that decision and so when we as the church are using such harsh language it's kind of putting a wall it's putting a barrier and it's pushing people away I also do think that there is something somewhat disheartening about <laughs> a dude having specific views on this issue is so cool I really wanted to hear what Jason had to say you really don't hear from dudes on the Roe v. Wade thing a lot so it's wonderful that Jason enlightened us on the on the matter you know what I mean it's cool. I, I think that she's the atheist. They should vote her out. Yeah. This turned into a, a odd one out episode, dude. What the fuck? How this looks right now that all males are on this side and all females are on that side. Personally, I don't necessarily agree with like using the language of killing babies because like that's like the darkest day in some of these like ladies lives, like the darkest day. And if I By the way, I do believe that. I do believe that um, there are evangelical women who also disagree with overturning uh, Roe v. Wade, for the record. Why? Because they're women, okay? And as she also correctly pointed out, like 70% of the women that are getting abortions in America are Christian. There are evangelical women getting abortions. Why? Because it's a fucking medical procedure, okay? That's the reason. Women are on both sides of this issue. They are the ones who are guiding the conversation on the anti-abortion side as well. I could outgo more that way because you're right, there are a lot of issues. And personally, Bro, I haven't fuck? experienced them. But I think the question is still, when is it okay to kill a baby? I just don't feel like as a guy, like, I could say much to, like i don't know maybe i, I don't know what i'm doing right now <laughs> bro he's like literally about to no longer be evangelical after the end of this video <laughs> right if it was about opinions which basketball team is better i think opinions whatever everybody's opinion is the same but because as evangelicals we stand on what the word of god you know there's where this type of girl goes to church you live here mosaic no, there's like non-denominational churches for all sects of Christianity or even like literally all religions. It's very weird. But that's the type of shit that like Hollywood weirdos do. For the record. And half of them do it because it's networking. But yeah, and then you have uh, that church which like moves into Hillsong territory, which is why, you know, Justin Bieber is now like a Hillsong guy and like really into fucking Christianity and shit. But they're not evangelical is saying to us we can stand on whether something is right or wrong or we could say that we, we could be wrong about that you're right i think any person jubilee wanted to do evangelical uh uh agitprop so fucking hard they cut out jason's microphone they were like jason you're ruining it for us and who was pro-life like we need to be putting ourselves in a situation where we're bearing that cost as well and it's not enough just to like you know donate some money every month right and like support I think we mosaic is insanely evangelical what are you doing oh i didn't know about mosaic i was talking about the non-denominational ones no these are evangelical churches that are clout no hillsong i don't know if hillsong is evangelical or not but hillsong is like a fucking straight up insane fucking christian church um Hillsong, on the other hand, is, uh, Hillsong, on the other hand, is also, Hillsong is Pentecostal. Okay, well, Hillsong, on the other hand, is also, uh, uh, like, they, they make it seem like they're modern. Okay? They make it seem as though they're modern, like they, their pastors got drippy shit, okay? 
Their pastors dressing like Balenciaga and stuff. Whereas, whereas uh, uh, the church I'm, I'm referencing is like non-denominational. All of us need to actually have skin in this game if we're going to be pro-life. And like, I think the church really needs to step up and be the ones to actually go to all those, go, to go to the women directly, to really put, to, like, it needs to cost us something. I'm excited to see the church equally fight for the sanctity of life at all levels. And not just in terms of the, the mother and the baby, but in terms of, yeah people experiencing all kinds of quality of life and that like yeah i feel like talking about the sanctity of life has become politicized in terms of how we care for the immigrant versus how we care for the woman having an abortion and i'd love to see us as the church be vocal about caring about life in general